In this presentation, I plan to evaluate two double integrals by the method of reversing the order of integration. The two integrals I'll look at are those shown here on page 1. We'll start with a. So just for the moment, I'll get b out of the way. OK, that's a by itself. Let's bracket the inner integral to make it very clear which integral is which. Here we can see quite clearly that the inside integral is an x integral. The integrand is e to the power x squared, and x runs from y as high as 2. We need to anti-differentiate the thing inside the x integral. Let's focus on that by itself for the moment. It's this integral here. I haven't bothered with the integration limits because I just want to talk about the anti-differentiation. We need to find a function which when we differentiate it, gives e to the power x squared. In other words, an antiderivative of e to the x squared. But it turns out there is no such function. It's not just that we're not clever enough. The function just doesn't really exist. If we wanted to talk about such a function, we would have to define it to be this integral, and then investigate all its properties. People do that in applied mathematics when they can't do an integral. But that's not the purpose of our exercise here. If we were faced with this integral by itself, we'd just have to say we can't do it. However, for us, this integral has a context. It is the inner part of a double integral. We have at hand the possibility of reversing the order of integration. You never know, that might help. Let's try it. To reverse the order of integration, we need a clear understanding of the region of integration. We can shade it in in different ways, if you remember. Let's get rid of the stuff at the bottom here now and make room for some pictures of the region of integration. Turns out we'll only need the first quadrant for this integral, so here's a start. Look at the outer integral. The variable y starts at 0 and finishes at 2. We'd better mark 2 on the y-axis. While we're at it, we might as well draw the line y equals 2. y equals 0, of course, is just the x-axis, so that's already drawn. Now what about the inner integral? The top limit is x equals 2. That'll be a vertical straight line at x equals 2. Let's draw that on. OK, nearly there. The last thing we've got to do is look at that bottom limit, x equals y or, alternatively, y equals x. That's just a sloping straight line that passes through the origin, and it will also pass through the other corner of our square at 2, 2. Let's draw that on. I've put both descriptions on, x equals y or y equals x. Let's now shade the region of integration as it stands at present with the current order, using our arrows. Look at the outer integral each y from 0 to 2. For each of those y's, the x variable must start at x equals y. That's on our sloping straight line. So the foot of the arrow will be all the way along the sloping straight line. The y integral is the outer one, so the arrows will be pointing left to right. And their head will be at x equals 2, the top limit of the x integral. Let's draw those in now. And now we've got a clear picture of the region of integration. To reverse the order, we need to turn the arrows up so that they're running from bottom to top. We'll have to do that on the next page. Here's the diagram again. I'll now put in the arrows. We now need to use this new situation to describe the new order for the integral. Let's write out some integral symbols ready to put the limits on. Here it is. I've reversed the order now. y is the inner integral, and x is the outer one. Look at the arrows. The feet are running from x equals 0 to x equals 2. That will be the limits for the x integral, which is the outer one. Let's put them in. OK, that was easy enough. Now the inner one. Now we follow the arrows from foot to head. For each x all the way from 0 to 2, the y runs from the x-axis, that's where y is naught, up to the sloping line. 
That sloping line had equation x equals y, but we could equally well think of it as y equals x. So the limits for the inner integral must be 0 to x. Let's put them in. OK, that's ready. The order's been reversed. But now look at the inner integral. It's a y integral, and the integrand is e to the x squared. We no longer have to find the antiderivative of e to the x squared, because as far as y is concerned, e to the x squared is a constant. Evaluating the inner integral will simply give us e to the x squared times y. Let's do that now. OK, that's the integration done. We have to substitute the limits, y equals x and y equals 0. That will just give us the integral of x times e to the x squared. Let's write that out now. Now this integral still has e to the x squared in, but the difference is that it has an x outside. x is half the derivative of x squared, so we can perform this integral by substitution. I'm not going to do all the details of the substitution here, because you should know how to do that at this point. Let's just write down the answer now. Here it is. If you don't believe it, you can easily enough differentiate a half e to the x squared, and you'll find the integrand in the, integra in the, in the integral above. It just remains to substitute in the limits. That's going to make a half e to the power 4 minus e to the 0. But e to the 0 is just 1. So that's the answer. We've managed to perform a seemingly impossible integral by reversing the order of integration. It wasn't impossible after all. A similar situation will happen in example b, which we'll now do rather quicker than the first example. Let me remind you what b was. It was this integral here. Look at the inner integral. Sine y over y dy. Once again, this is an integral which it's impossible to do by itself. We simply don't know an uh, anti-differentiation process for sine of a variable divided by the same variable. However, we can get through this integral also by reversing the order. Let's draw the region now. All right, here's the diagram, and I've also prepared the new integral with the opposite order of integration at the top. We just have to shade in the region of integration and put on the limits. It's not quite the same region as before, it's the upper half this time, not the lower half. For each y from 0 to pi, the arrows run from x equals 0 to x equals y, the sloping straight line. Let's put all of those in straight away. OK, there's the integral with the order reversed. Look at the inner integral now. It's an x integral. So sine y over y can be regarded as a constant while we do that integral. We'll just get sine y over y times x. Let's start to write that out. You can see now that by reversing the order of integration, we've got rid of the y underneath. It's cancelled. That leaves us a very simple integral, sine y. The integral of sine y is just negative cos y. So we've now finished. Let's write out the answer. We substitute in the limits. Cos of pi is negative 1. Cos of 0 is 1. There's an overall negative outside. And so the two terms combine to give positive 2. That's the value of the integral. We've bypassed the problem with the impossible integrand by reversing the order of integration. If you can't do a double integral at first sight in the order it's given, it is always worth a try at reversing the order to see if it is now easier. That concludes my presentation.